Well, how's about this for a bit of intimate fishing? I'm uh, my mate Mick, who's going to be showing you how to fish uh, jig heads and uh, various other kind of lures in a bit. Um, I'm doing a little bit of a variation on the theme, which is uh, drop shot. Uh, it's not something I've caught a fish on yet, so I'm a drop shot virgin, and, and certainly in this country. Um, but I'm going to bait up the swim. What we're trying to do is we're trying to get some fish coming to attract the fish that I'm um, drawing into the swim using traditional maggots, pinkies, chop worm. And so to that end what I'm going to do is uh, my lovely assistant here. <laughs> I'm going to put a, a bait dropper on. This is a, not the smallest one you can get but it's sort of a medium one. I'll take the lure off there. And if you've used these before you know they've got like a little cork or a rubber catchment for your hook. They're quite simple to use, just get some worms. I'm just going to put about, I don't know, 10 worms in there, dendrobinas, about half a kilo. And with some worm scissors, just a couple of cuts, say a few prayers, and then just a pinch of pinkies and just a few reds. And then using a, a margin pole, this, this is a Beastmaster margin pole, and I'm just going to swing that out to about four meters, just over the ledge. It's the water, let it go down, it's the deck, and when it hits the deck, it plunges the lever upwards because it's got a weight on the bottom. And you can see it discards all the contents right on the bottom of the lake. This is great fishing chop worm for perch, generally speaking. And to say, what I'm doing here is I'm trying to build this swim up so that Mick and ultimately myself can catch some fish. I'm going to top that up during the course of the day and Mick's going to fish around the locks and uh, have a patrol around. I'm going to stick in this swim and keep topping up over, over a period of time. And then I'm going to also use, I'm not fishing for small fish, I'm actually fishing for the, the predators, zander, perch, whatever, decide to predate on those small fish I've drawn in. And hopefully Mick's going to catch a few on that basis too. Um, and from time to time I'm just going to put a little, one of these kind of imitation bait fry things there on a drop shot rig and I'm going to fish that pretty much over where I put that drop that drop that bait in so before we both get blown into the bushes behind us uh, Mick's going to fire off downstream if it's called downstream on a canal down lock and uh, he's going to go and catch some fish for us while I just stand here and uh, Probably not catch a great deal on this, but uh, I've got some other equipment later I can have a play around. So I'll leave you to it, Mick. We'll see you later. as this seems, I've always used poles all over the years in my match fishing career and latterly for various different techniques when I've been fishing for specimen fish, not least cupping bait out or using poles to poke rigs into PVA bags and stuff into very difficult areas. Um, and there's no reason why this shouldn't work, there's just one word of warning if you're going to be using a pole, obviously look up and make sure there's no cables around, even with margin poles, you've just got to be very careful. Um, use a strong pole, Beastmaster Margin is one of the strongest on the market and um, use some decent elastic, I mean, I've got about 12s or 14s in here, I'm fishing for perch, possibly zander, uh, but you might encounter a pike or two so um, you know if you're doing fish in an area and uh, well generally speaking you use a trace. Um, the beauty about using a pole as opposed to using a, a rod and line um, is you can cover some pretty interesting areas. You can you can move it around in a D shape, which um, is a bit like casting out on a on a lure or a spinner or a plug where you keep working around the clock. You can work around the clock, and on a canal, obviously, 
because you can walk, there's no obstructions in terms of walking along the canal, you can do a D shape to and from the bank with the pole pretty much towards you now and then work all your way back towards 180 degrees in the opposite direction and then just move up a yard so the leak frog it. I'm not saying it'll guarantee catching any fish on a good water where there's lots of predators, pike and zander and um, perch, it will catch. Um, and I'm not saying for one minute it'll, it'll, it'll be using a traditional spinning rod, uh, six ball or a bait casting reel. But it's a bit of fun and, um, and I'd be like to be one of the first to catch on a drop shot. In fact, I'd love to catch on a drop shot, but uh, time will tell. Well, you find me here today on the Grand Union Canal and I'm trying to catch a Xander. Now, I've never fished for Xander in the canal here before, so I don't know what to expect, but I'm putting all my faith in these Storm soft plastics. Now, I'm not just fishing blindly. We've got a little bit of a plan going on here. Jan and I have worked out a plan to try and get the Xander into the swim. And what we're going to do, Jan is going to bait an area with maggots and worms just to try and draw some silverfish in and then when he's been doing that for an hour or so I'm going to run the soft plastic through the swim to see if any predators have come in and um, it's worked on other places and I feel quite confident that if there are any number of Xander here we're going to get one. Obviously it's essential to choose a jig to suit the water conditions and this water it's quite shallow, probably three to four feet deep, and the colour is like tea. So I'm looking for something quite light and something quite bright, something quite visual. And just through experience, I've chosen a jig head that weighs about eight grams, and I've got a bright chartreuse lure. So I'll be able to work that very, very nicely across the bottom without it picking up weed and debris and mud. And Using the rod tip, I'll be able to impart the right action into it just to make it look like a small fish struggling along the bottom. The water temperature is fairly high at the moment, so I'm moving the jig quite fast. This is the time of year when Xander and Perch and Pike will chase the lure. Had the water temperature been a little bit colder, I'd probably have worked it a lot slower. Now that might look a fairly, a fairly large jig, but uh, believe me, even a 12 ounce perch will swallow that quite easily. And on the other end of the scale, even the biggest pike and Xander will take that. Uh, I've caught Xander well into double figures on quite small jigs like that. As I said earlier, Jan has been fishing this swim. He's laid down a bed of maggots and worms, and hopefully there's a few silverfish there. And if that's drawn any predators in, I'm hoping to get one probably within the first five or six casts. Well, as I'm sure you can hear, there's quite a brisk wind blowing and Apart from making filming difficult, it's also making it difficult for me to detect the bites. So, I'm actually feeling for the bite. Uh, I'm expecting a fairly firm pluck on the, on the line and hopefully just to see some sort of uh, pull on the rod tip as well. But with the wind blowing as it is, I'm really struggling. There's a big bow in the line. But fortunately, this is a time of year when the bites can be quite bold. If this had been a really cold winter's day, I'd have struggled to see the bites at all, as they tend to nip onto them very, very gently when it's cold.
if you want to have a go at this style of fishing, you may already have suitable gear. If you've got a, a light spinning rod and uh, a small reel, you can probably get started. Today I'm using a Technium rod and reel. Um, this to me is the perfect setup for the job. It's a 10 to 30 gram rod. That refers to the casting weight of the lures that you're casting. So it's ideal for casting lures that weigh, as I say, from 10 to 30 grams, and that normally refers to the weight of the lead jig head. This one's about 10 grams, so it, it's, just, it's just perfect for this rod. I'm using a 4,000 size reel. Um, you might be happier with the 2,500. Uh, I just like the feel of a big chunky reel for when I get a bigger fish. The rod length, um, it is important. Too long and you're not going to feel the bites. Too short and you, and you, may, you, may, not, uh, you may not detect the bites either, especially if it's a short, stiff rod. Uh, I prefer this medium action rod, 8 foot long, and it's got a nice sensitive tip so I can really feel the bites when they come. The most important thing really is to get the correct line. You do need a braided line because you're feeling for quite delicate bites and if you're using mono you're probably not going to feel a lot of the bites. Very little stretching braid and you should feel every knock on the jig. I'm choosing to use a 30 pound braking strain. This happens to be Power Pro. Um, there's lots of other good braids around. Um, 30 pound I find a good general purpose braid. If there's no snags about and I'm using the lighter jigs, I'll probably go down to 20 pound braking strain. Mm. But, um, you know, if you just want to go out and enjoy yourself, you don't have to get it absolutely spot on. But as you go along, you'll start to fine tune the setup you've got. This works for me and I enjoy using it and it catches me a lot of fish. But as I say, you don't have to copy me exactly, but start off with something similar and I don't think you'll really go far wrong. Zander from the Grand Union Canal. Oh, a really, really positive bite that was. How about that then? Right, let's get the jig out and take a closer look. Well, not a particularly huge Zander, but a, a very pretty fish. Lovely markings, really plump which they would be at this time of year because it's coming up to spawning time. And there's the little jig it took. And I chose that colour because the water is very, very murky. And I wanted to give them a chance to see it. I'm going to put it back and uh, just hope we can get another one. I'm quite pleased to catch one actually because uh, I knew there was Andrew in the canal here. We, we got a tip off that there was one or two being caught. And um, when we arrived earlier this morning, the conditions were absolutely perfect. Um, overcast, uh, windy, the water's nicely coloured, which is all, all perfect conditions for Xander. The water temperature's coming up. It's been right down at rock bottom. In fact, it was frozen recently. Uh, now the water's probably up in double figures now, and it's just perfect conditions for catching a Xander and uh, it didn't take us long to get one.
well that's a great result I'm really pleased with that and I'm going to work at getting another one now Well, for me, it's been a very pleasant couple of hours fishing and I hope I've given you some insight into how you can set about catching predators on soft plastics in a very cheap and easy way, really. It's something that's open to anyone. You don't need a great degree of skill to quickly pick up this style of fishing. And as I say, there's tackle to suit everyone's pockets at every, at every level. So I'm going to carry on fishing. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed seeing the fish I've caught but there's still a few hours left yet and I'll tell you what, this sort of fishing it really gets to you, it's fascinating and I hope that it gets to you like it's got to me and uh, I enjoy it so much I just don't want to stop, I'm going to carry on till dark. <laughs>